Yo, it's November and sunset today is like, I don't know, 3.15 p.m., something like that. Larry the Cable Guy, he tweeted, how do you not get a ballot in on time? I mean, everybody knows it's November 3rd for four years. It's like being a freshman in college that only gives you one assignment that's not due till your senior year and it's all multiple choice, but you somehow still need an extension. Some late night jokes with the White House reacting to coronavirus. Jimmy Fallon said the White House has said it is what it is and we're not going to try to control it. They talk about COVID like it's a wild teen on Dr. Phil. Colbert said, all right, so after eight months of not really trying and now they're just giving up, that's not good. That's like if Mothers Against Drunk Driving changed its name to Mothers Who Realize, hey, you got to go home from the bar somehow. Seth Meyers said, at this point, the mayor from Jaws would be an upgrade. By the way, watch Jaws. I think it's an allegory for coronavirus handling. Just watch Jaws. You don't have to watch the shark part. Just watch the first hour and you'll see where Seth Myers is going there when he said at this point the mayor from Jaws would be an upgrade. Trevor Noah said, I can safely say I've never seen a world leader get bored of a crisis. Kostaki Economopoulos getting ready for football. He's the host of Quick Snaps. And he said, the Jets are so bad, Greta Thunberg no longer claims to be going green. That is a great joke. Quick Snaps is a podcast. Vulture spoke to 24 comedians. They gave advice to their pre-pandemic selves. Some of those comedians, Maria Bamford said, enjoy every second of being on stage, snort in the scent of a well-used microphone. Kate Berlant said, don't cancel any shows. Talk to everyone. You're about to essentially lose your personality. You'll even miss people you have no chemistry with. Stay out very, very late. Joel Kim Booster said, I would tell myself to let go of feeling embarrassed about experimenting with different kinds of online comedy early. Just do the Instagram live show. Figure out a way to make TikTok work. All of that. I feel like I'm just sort of now realizing that the way I've done comedy in the past, the only thing I'm really good at is live stand-up comedy, and it won't exist for a while. Now I feel behind. I feel like I've got to create an Instagram live show, but all the good ideas have been taken. I felt embarrassed and nervous at the beginning because it's not what I do, but I wish I would have experimented a little more back when everybody else was figuring stuff out. Not now when it feels like everyone else has. Ron Funches said, hi, pre-pandemic Ron. You're going to be really happy that you finally went to Japan and didn't put it off one more year. I went to France at the beginning of 2020. I'm so glad that I did that. Like, all the time, I'm like, I can't believe I was actually out of the country in 2020. Not many of us were. Ron said, I know you think getting into the stock market right now is a responsible thing to do, but trust me, it is not. Spend that money on toilet paper, weed, and Nintendo Switches, and you will thank me later. Be nice to your wife. She's going to be one of the few reasons you survive the next six months. Jay Farrow is taking credit for the term Karen. This from Insider. And they're saying in his special, Can I Be Me? Jay Farrow used the name Karen to describe an annoying white woman. In the bit, Farrow says, It's always a Karen. Jay said, I'm the one who started. There's always a white woman named Karen. You can ask any of my friends. For years, I did that joke. If you've got $3 million, you can buy Jeff Foxworthy's house. This from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Jeff and his wife, Pamela, have downsized to a smaller home, and they're selling their longtime retreat, the Riverside Estate, located on a quiet cul-de-sac. It's a magnificent home built to perfection and detailed with hidden gems throughout. If you look this thing up online, it is pretty nice looking. Chris Fleming is one of Vulture's 20 comedians to watch, along with She That Shall Not Be Named on today's podcast. You know her from Internet Thing? She does that thing? Not saying her name today. You got enough of that on Wednesday's pod, Thursday's pod, and Friday's pod. They asked Chris Fleming, assuming quarantine ends at some point, that is a major assumption. Jesus. Is there anything about the way that comedy or the industry in general has changed that you hope continues post-quarantine? Sorry, my brain froze. So my kids got a note. They're going to be home from school for two weeks because somebody tested positive. I hope somebody is doing well. I used to record this podcast like late in the day. And then everybody started schooling from home. Again, we're all dealing with this. So now I record in the morning, but sometimes I have to do other things. If I ever have to record this thing in the afternoon now, it's like stomp fest. It's like the kids get home and they're teenagers and they're just like stomp, 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 stomp. And you kind of sound like a jerk when you're like, can you stop? Daddy's trying to podcast. Like that's that just sounds ridiculous. So Chris Fleming, if this thing ends, what do you hope continues post quarantine? Fleming said, it's nice not to feel competitive anymore because what are we competing for now? Also, maybe stand-up will matter even less. Anything polished right now seems kind of embarrassing. It's kind of nice to see some pulp and not a shiny five to seven minute Carson Ready set. 
Sometimes I wish I'd see them lose control for a second, stub their toe, and be like, F it! I want to see John Mulaney bump his lip into the mic stand mid-joke and punch the air like Jack Nicholson walking into the bar in The Shining. Maybe I'm just jealous. There's something exciting about the idea of performing in theaters again, but maybe that time is over. Yikes. Vulture caught up with Tim Heidecker. I told you last week I enjoyed that special a lot. And they said, hey, you filmed the special in 2017. What's that journey been like? Tim said, I've been doing that act for about 10 years. Obviously, the stand-up world is not my primary focus. It's one of the many weird things I do. So we said, let's just shoot a special because I built up a nice set that I thought was fun and funny and shopping and around a lot of the normal places. Ironically, did not have a great sense of humor about stand-up comedy. In fact, one place was, we feel like he's making fun of stand-up comedy. Yes. Yes, he is. Tim said, what, is that the sacred cow you're not allowed to make fun of? How insecure. (laughs) His special's on YouTube. Definitely check that out. I'm going to leave on a serious note today. This from Variety. The Kazakh American Association has slammed Sasha Baron Cohen's Borat sequel for what it deems to be a racist depiction of Kazakhs. The group is also questioning Amazon Prime Video support of a film that they say could incite violence against a highly vulnerable and underrepresented minority ethnic group. Gian Nurtsis is a L.A.-based Kazakh native who's the founder and CEO of the Hollywood Film Academy and says, Sasha Baron Cohen and his crew whitewashes our ethnicity and therefore makes it okay to make fun of us. It would be completely politically incorrect if they were Asian or black. Considering today's socially aware political climate, why is a racist film which openly berates bullies and traumatizes a nation comprised of people of color an acceptable form of entertainment that meets Amazon's ethical values. Why is our small nation fair game for public ridicule? In the film, a white person adorns a Kazakh persona and then culturally appropriates and belittles everything we stand for. We Kazakhs are a small nation, but it does not mean that we are allowed to be targets for racism. Mr. Cohen states that his primary target is Trump and racist Americans. If this were the case, he would have created a fake country as he did in the film The Dictator. However, Mr. Cohen chose to openly bully, humiliate, and dehumanize an actual nation. I think it's a very interesting point, and I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't been saying for a week that I found the film very funny, but that gave me something to think about. That's your comedy news for today. See you tomorrow. Subscribe on Apple. Follow on Google. Follow on Spotify. See you then.